Well, welcome back to Project 613. Today, we learn the Torah's prohibition on a husband from withholding from his wife her basic rights. The Torah obligates a husband to provide for his wife food, clothing, and sexual relations. And failing to do so is a biblical violation. We know this from the verse that says, She'irak suta v'onata lo yigra. He shall not deprive her of her food, her clothing, and her sexual relations. In its original context, this verse is actually a reference to a case of a Jewish maidservant whose master ends up marrying her. And when the Torah describes the obligations of the master to his new wife, the Torah says that she should be treated like any other wife and enumerates these three responsibilities of She'irak, Sutav, Onata. And from here, our sages teach us that it's, it is these three obligations that pertain to any marriage and any husband would be obligated to fulfill them. Now, why is it necessary for this to be a mitzvah? Is this not basic human decency that a husband provides his wife with these basic needs? And one of the answers is that by making this a mitzvah, the Torah is actually giving us the opportunity to take something which would otherwise be a mundane human activity and turn it into something which is also a holy act. When a person provides when a man provides for his wife, not only because it's the human thing to do, but because it's what God told him to do, then by doing so, he is actually fulfilling a mitzvah. He is doing something holy. And these otherwise physical, material, mundane behaviors now take on an element of holiness and become part of a person's divine service and part of a person's relationship with Hashem. Now, these obligations really are the minimum, the minimal obligation of a husband to his wife in providing these things are measured by the standard of the day and by the custom in the locale. The Rambam gives us the details of exactly what's included in clothing, for example. It's not just uh, regular clothing, but even jewelry is included in the clothing. The Rambam even mentions lipstick as well, which is included in the obligations for a husband to pay for his wife. And whereas there is the bare minimum that every husband is obligated to provide for his wife, but the Rambam tells us as well that if a person can afford to do more, then he is, ob then he is obligated to provide according to his means and according to his wealth. All of these obligations are written in the ketubah. They are written in the marriage contract. But it's not the fact that they're written in the contract that makes them obligatory for the husband. The husband would be obligated to fulfill these regardless whether or not they were, would have been written in the ketubah. The only reason why they are included there is to emphasize to the husband how important these obligations are and that he has to see, see to it as a responsibility that he has to fulfill.